What's going on, America? I'm Jeffrey Parrish, and you're watching the Financial News Network Tech Sector Update. We just ran a story regarding Verizon's move to a data-only plan called Share Everything. The move means that consumers no longer will be paying for individual phone calls and text messages with unlimited internet. Instead, the company is flipping the model over, giving unlimited calling and text messaging services while charging more discriminately for data usage. Now, I'm a Verizon customer myself and fancy myself pretty tech savvy, but I have no idea how much data I consume regularly. Perhaps you're in the same boat. Well, here's a brief overview of what data usage is, some commonplace terms that will help everyone be on the same page, and an in-depth look as to how much what you do on your mobile device will cost in data usage. Starting with the basics, what is data usage used for? Well, quite simply, whenever your iPod, iPad, smartphone, tablet, or whatever other device you have connects to the Internet, voila, there you are using Internet data. Now, if you're in a Starbucks, for instance, or an airport, or even at home, if you're lucky enough to have a wireless network there, you can use your Wi-Fi connection. Wi-Fi is a way to connect to the internet wirelessly without using your precious data. Whoever owns a Wi-Fi access point pays monthly internet so you don't have to. But when you're walking down the street and looking for directions on your phone, there probably isn't Wi-Fi handy and you are using your data. Now, most devices can be configured to constantly be searching for Wi-Fi signals. It's a drain on the device's battery, sure, but it does minimize your data usage. Cambridge, Massachusetts boasts that they are the only city in the country with completely free Wi-Fi coverage for the entire population. This may be the start of a new trend where generous Robin Hood wannabes leave their networks open for everyone walking by to use, but it hasn't happened yet. Now, how is data measured? Well, just like any other computer-based storage, this uses the bytes system, and that's bytes, B-Y-T-E-S. There are 1,000 bytes in a kilobyte, or 1,000 kilobytes in a megabyte, and there are 1,000 megabytes in a gigabyte. There are 1,000 gigabytes in a terabyte, and it keeps going on and on and on with petabytes and exabytes and so forth and so on. Now, this is commonly understood when you're buying a new computer and you look at the size of the hard drive. You know you want to drive with enough storage to hold all your programs and pictures and other things. But how does this apply to your data plan? Clearly, you aren't storing a computer on your iPad. In the same respect that your computer hard drive dictates how much information you can store in it, your mobile network and data plan dictates how much and how fast your mobile device can get. According to Verizon Wireless, the 3G network operates at 400 to 1200 kilobytes per second. That means on average, your phone, for example, can download 400 to 1200 kilobytes per second of information. The new 4G network supposedly runs at 10 times that speed, which also means it uses 10 times the amount of data. How does this compare to your home network? Well, remember your old dial-up modem? We were all blown away when it was upgraded to a 56.6 kilobyte per second and astonished that traditional Ethernet cables, the larger rectangular cable plug, could handle 10 megabytes per second. Now we're seeing over a gigabyte per second in many offices and even some home networks. So your home Wi-Fi may be slower than your mobile network, and the bandwidth, the capacity of information that is transmitted through the net, is split among all your home devices. Thus, if your computer is using 100 megabytes per second of internet usage, your Pandora radio uses 256 megabytes per second, and your Xbox Netflix account is using 300 megabytes per second while you watch a movie, you'll be using 656 megabytes, roughly one half of a gigabyte, of your available bandwidth. Now, if your home network handles one gigabyte per second, you're using 65.6% of your total network's capability, meaning your 4G phone is only working like your five-year-old Motorola Flip. This is why people will want to use their data plans. For a bit of money, you can get the most out of your phone. But what does that mean exactly? How much will it cost in data terms to use your mobile device the way you want? 
Well, Verizon Wireless provided us with an online data usage calculator. You can go to it on their website by typing data calculator in their search engine, but for demonstration's sake, let's take a look at a typical usage in the calculator together. Now, when you open the calculator, you can select the category of device that you use. For now, I'll select 3G and 4G smartphones. Now let's say I send 25 emails a day from my phone and visit 750 sites a month. Now this may seem like a lot, but with a pop-up ads, click-through windows, different pages on different sites, you can eat up this allotment quite quickly. Just to view my bank statement takes me through four different windows, and I like to check it daily. Set the number you think you use, but overestimate. Now, I listen to Pandora frequently, so I also am going to set this to an hour a day. And let's add a couple of other common things that I may use. As you can see on the right, the estimated total is over 4.5 gigabytes of data per month and I was using it conservatively, I would say. Just below the allotment, you can see the actual breakdown of what each interaction will cost, an email being 10 kilobytes per second. So how does this compare to current prices? Well, the new Verizon Wireless Share Everything plan requires you to pay a monthly access. For smartphones, it's $40 per line and ranges down to $10 for tablets. And each device you add will add another line charge. The data plans range from $50 for 1 gigabyte of data to $100 for 10 gigabytes of data. Conveniently for Verizon, our typical usage of about 5 gigabytes does not have a plan, forcing customers to pay either $70 for a 4 gigabyte plan or $80 for a 6 gigabyte plan. Now when you add these charges together, you get your bill. Ours was a whopping $150 before tax. Now this is more than I pay for a 900 minute per month unlimited text package. In fact, it's almost $40 more pre-tax than the average phone plan that gives you comparable services. So would you say that this will save you money in the long run? Well, no. If you have multiple phones or device users in your home, this could be exponentially more expensive. For the private user, you end up paying more for services you don't use. For some, however, a small number, this may end up being a steal, as current unlimited phone and text packages can run up and over $200. But the bottom line is that times are changing. We were spoiled with unlimited data plans, and we knew that it was only a matter of time before someone cashed in on it. My advice to you is to use an online data calculator and really examine how you use your network services. This has been an extended Tech Sector Special Report. I'm Jeffrey Parrish, and you're watching FNNO.com.